Hey everyone, welcome to this exciting, exciting thing we have going on here. Um, <laughs> we are joining Izzy Lee as she is running a campaign for her first feature film. Um, this is on Kickstarter and we're all here in support. Uh, over here we have Christopher Golden. I don't think I need to introduce Christopher Golden. Um, we have Casey Lansdale also needs no introduction. Um, and I just spent like 10 days with Casey. So I feel like I'm seeing my best friend again. <laughs> I'm so happy. Um, <laughs> um, also, um, Izzy Lee, just you are like churning out debuts, like one right after the other. You have a debut um, novel coming out in 2024 <laughs> and a debut film after this Kickstarter gets fully funded, right? Indeed, indeed. Uh, yes, and I have <laughs> I have you to thank for helping me along with a debut novel as my editor. <laughs> would that be would that be the correct title, editor in chief of? Dark um, I mean, yeah, like I you know obviously have reconstructed some things with Dark Heart um, just due to uh, like time constraints and just just different things, different directions, but I am your editor for this project, yes. <laughs> Yay. Yay! I can see your lies coming out February 13th, 2024, I Dark Heart Book and Imprints <laughs> of Dark Matter. Inc. You know, it's nice because I've known Izzy for a while now and I met her actually, probably I think Christopher Golden was the introduction and I've been watching her work on all these different projects and just grind and grind and grind. And so it's fun to watch her have an overnight um, you know, sort of launch of all these things because we behind the scenes know the work that goes into it and how long it takes just to have one thing come to fruition. So the fact that we're here talking about multiples, I think, is a testament to uh, to your grit. Oh, well, yeah. thank you. I want to I want to say just like for starters that I love being on this conversation <laughs> with the three of you because it's like. Uh, I'm old, so uh, you may not know the rhythmic song uh, Sisters Are Doing It For Themselves. I know that song. Uh, but, but I love that song, and, and I love the fact that the three of you represent uh, a sort of spearhead of, uh, of changes in horror fiction where it's like, you know what? We're not waiting for somebody else anymore to say something's okay to do. We're just going to do it. And that's what I love about the decisions that Izzy has been making for the past year is like, I'm not waiting anymore. I'm just doing it. And, and so many of us have been, have been saying that to you, Izzy for a while. And I'm so happy that you're, you're, you're doing it now. And I'm so happy with the results that you've seen and all the people who come out to support you to basically be like, yes, Izzy, remember when we told you, we thought you were amazingly talented <laughs> and wanted you to do this. We meant it. Oh my God. Well, and I don't want this to be like a big love fest, even though it already is. But like, you know, Christopher, you are one of the people who always beats everybody's drum. Everybody here, you support, you promote, yes. you share, and that is not lost on any of us. So, yeah. you know, the part of the reason that we are able to come together and do it on our own is because we've had a team of people behind us quietly and in some cases like you not so quietly pushing and supporting and sometimes you really need that from the outside so not yeah. not to be forgotten you know well Never that's appreciated but what i love is that that you know putting this kickstarter together was izzy taking the leap of faith that we've all been telling her the truth all along <laughs> and now it is it is bearing out that that is indeed the truth and i know that that's going to be a tailwind for you, Izzy, like going forward, making this film, raising more money, creating stretch goals so you can have the kind of crew that you need and all of that. And I'm super excited. But but I think also that like if we're having this conversation, people are going to want you to sort of even though the, the Kickstarter has information, people are going to want you to tell them what the movie's about. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. All right. So uh, <laughs> to build off of that, and thank you very much, I I got really fed up with pitching for years and years and years and years and doing it the right way. And, you know, I, I've had enough. I've had more than enough. And here we are, the Kickstarter for uh, my first feature film, House of Ashes, is live. We hate, we, we hit 82%. <laughs> 
uh, in our second morning, which is insane to me. Um, and and I, I think having an entire decade on the festival circuit has paid off. Um, we're still a little bit, uh, we've still got a little bit left to go. We did keep that goal very low initially in order to hit it and instill confidence that yes, we are absolutely making this movie. Um, by the time this airs, we'll probably be on a stretch goal. Um, and if not, if you're watching this, it'll be very soon um, in order to hire some more uh, production support. So to help things uh, run correctly, I, I'm looking to hire a, a rad AD. So ADs save lives, they save time, they save money. And I've never really had a legitimate uh, AD. So I am really excited to, to try to bring somebody like that on board. This also means that uh, if we reach a stretch goal, we can get some extra special special effects. And, um, you know, what's a good horror movie without some rad special effects, sure. right? Yeah. So House of Ashes is about uh, the grieving widow Mia, who has been put under house arrest for the crime of having a miscarriage in one of our fantastic United States here. So, not so far off of reality now, is it? Uh, the problem is, since she can't leave, she has a little trouble with uh, some hauntings that are starting up in her house shortly after a new boyfriend moves in. Things go missing. Things get pretty creepy, tension rises. There's some surreal moments that I really can't wait to show you, but it's basically, it comes down to how do you survive when you are absolutely unable to leave? Cause you know, if she tries to leave, she gets a worse sentence and the cops certainly aren't going to be very helpful. So how do we traverse this? Are you suggesting that in a state <laughs> where that would be against the law that the police might be unsympathetic toward a woman? They might, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Say it as it's so <laughs> Right. Um, I love, you know, I love the can't leave part because isn't it like the hardest thing in so many horror movies is uh, to have that moment where the audience goes, why are they still there? Why haven't they just left to, to, to come up with a reason why they're still there? And, and this is perfect. Thank you. It's, uh, it's, it's, you know, I don't think I've seen it, you know, before. So uh, we're pretty excited. I co-wrote the script with my, my partner, Niall Nocton Films, and my husband, Steve Johansson. And um, I think it might have been his conceit. I think he came up with the idea and then we ran with it. And then we built off of each other's work. And I know uh, I'm, I'm speaking to a lot of people who have co-written things here and things. Sometimes you're like, oh, did I write that? Or did you write that? I don't know anymore because we've gone over it <laughs> so many times. But um, I'm really excited to be working with him. Um, he'll be on board producing as well. And uh, I, I might throw him in the movie. I don't know yet. I tend to do that. <laughs> As long as he dies horribly. Oh, my goodness. Do you want to come out and die horribly for me? <laughs> sure. <laughs> awesome. <Why not? laughs> you know. Yeah. If so, you need a sauce uh, in the background, it's always fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've, uh, we've got a really incredible lead actor named Vincent Stalba, who has been in a lot of uh, really super cool indie genre shorts. Uh, he was also in a scene uh, with, well, on the phone with Tom Hiddleston in the biopic, I Saw the Light. So um, I'm really, really excited to work with him. I am on the hunt for my lead Mia. Um, I'm having some conversations right now with some exciting people and uh, I don't know what's gonna happen just yet but I hope to update people very soon. I have some layperson questions. Yeah, go for it. Um, starting with what is an AD? Yes, okay, assistant director. Okay. So an assistant director 
is there for scheduling and safety purposes and to make sure that everything runs smoothly. They oil the gears, they help the wheels turn and um, they keep you on time and on budget. And hopefully they're nice about it. Sometimes they're not, but time is money and things are, you know, that it's a lot of pressure, but on this set, it's not gonna be like that because um, we're gonna have a small crew we're going to be agile. We're going to be fast. And uh, I like to treat my people well. And I like to have a good time when I can, when I'm not stressing out. <laughs> and even when I'm stressing out, I try not to let it show because I don't want any anxiety to trickle down and affect my cast or crew either. So, yeah, ADs are very, very important, very helpful. Because the people you have working with you, Mike and Sophia specifically, they are on your crew constantly yeah man i think it's a testament that they continue to come back and that they are of the skill level that they are and they work in this way with you and so not only is it quick and, and efficient you guys already have your sort of unwritten language so you're already coming in with a strong team it, with their skills but the fact that you work with them before just elevates what you can bring as a, a production yeah thank you uh mike and sophia i've known them jesus more than a decade now. Um, and they've been on my crew quite a bit. I've crewed up with them on the occasion. And uh, we have a shorthand. And Sophia Cacciola is a great cinematographer. She's wonderful. Michael J. Epstein. Oh, my God. So super smart. Crazy good uh, sound mixer and production recordist, as well as editor. And he also does VFX work. So um they are my team weirdo and that's what i like to call us it's a very fun affectionate term kind of like the island of misfit toys and i'm really excited to work with them again another person i'm super happy to be back with another very long time collaborator uh shane grin is my montreal composer and he has done uh music and uh the score for most of my shorts so I'm super excited to get his talented blend of eerie weirdness back. So excited, you guys. <laughs> no. I have another layperson question. Yeah. Christopher, do you want to go? No, go ahead. Okay, so another layperson question, because I, I know our Nightworms audience isn't super familiar with, you know, everything that happens behind the scenes with like make, making a movie. Um, when you say that this is like a short film, um, where is the best place to check out where those are, you know, being shown? Like, you know, a lot of us are just familiar with what comes out to the theaters, but like, where can we get caught up on like indie horror movies? You know, I, I was able to watch your, your short, um, meet friend um, <laughs> as you were, you know, circulating it, but like, where else, like, what's a resource we can check out for sure. watching this? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a couple of links to throw in the show notes. Uh, I've got two shorts on the Alter uh, YouTube channel, Rights of Vengeance and My Monster. Um, I've got another Rehome starring uh, Gigi Salcarero and Casey Lansdale and Morgan Peter Brown that I believe is still on Shudder as part of Etheria Collection Season 6. I could be wrong. Um, it's also floating around, uh, possibly on Voodoo and Tubi. Not quite sure at the moment, but there's that. And uh, one of the reward tiers includes uh, a short film download package as well. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah, good, Thanks. good. Christopher, <laughs> sorry, you did go ahead. Oh, you're muted. I have to unmute. So. <laughs> Um, one of the things I was going to, I'm glad you asked that question, Sadie, because, <clears throat> you know, I've seen, I think, all or almost all of the short films that Izzy has made. And uh, one of the things that always astounds me, Izzy, is, is the breadth of tone that from one short film to another short film to the next short film, they're all so different from each other. Some of them are really dark and really grim and nasty. And some of them are um, firmly tongue in cheek and funny, um, like sardonic. And so one of the things I'm wondering is like, for people who have seen a bunch of your short films, but also for people who haven't and are like listening to me say this right now, 
what are you what are you going for for the tone of this as you know for this is your first feature length film mm -hmm. you know you have this breadth of ability to hit different tones what are you going for thank you for asking that um i do like to play with different genres and different tones um sometimes the darkness is so dark that i need to get out of it and make something funny and strange and crazy like me friend for example, is one of my absurd nihilism films, I like to call it. Um, <laughs> and so, um, you know, I do have several very horrific type of shorts. This is not going to be a nasty toned film. You know what I mean? It's not going to be a film that hurts to watch. It's going to be more of an A24 horror type of, of film. You know, if you think of like, Hereditary. Um, that hurt to watch. Without, okay, that's fair. Um, hereditary without the budget, <laughs> you know, without yeah. the well, however millions he had for that, which you know he's yeah. an incredible filmmaker and quite deserves it. Um, I sadly do not have the same opportunity, but um, I'm going for a a dark, brooding, surreal. Uh, slow burn of a film. I want to build some dread. There will also be a few months here and there of uh, some black comedy to alleviate some tension before I ratchet it back up again. Um, Mia, when she starts out in the film, she is immediately going under house arrest and she's having bad memories and she's quite lost. She doesn't have a lot of hope as your wonderful t-shirt says. Um, but by the time we end the film and we head to the credits, uh, she's going to be quite empowered. So I think that um, a lot of people, especially women are actually going to feel quite good and quite empowered at the end of the film. So there will be some hope and some light in the darkness. I have a question, uh, just like a outsider question on this. Like, how do you think, because you mentioned, especially the audience of women, I, I mean, it's for everybody I know, but how do you think that that landscape, especially in horror as a filmmaker, I mean, Christopher kind of set it at the top that now he's, you know, we're all in this world, but how has it been for you as a filmmaker that the landscape has changed? Uh, as a filmmaker that happens to be female, it's uh, it's been interesting, <laughs> you know, um, I used to get a lot of, uh, at, at certain film festivals uh, in the South, um, more so, and then sometimes in the North as well, uh, depending. Uh, I used to get a lot of uh, guys asking my husband questions about my film, you know, and that's always really nice, assuming that, you know, the man is the director, because that's the world we have lived in since Wall Street took Hollywood from women and, uh, you know, the Jewish folk uh, back in the 20s and, you know, late 1900s. Um, it's been really hard. You know, I'm not going to lie. I've, I've watched a number of, of men uh, get chance after chance after chance and then actually develop their skill set and become a really good filmmaker by feature film three. Um, women don't have that opportunity. We're judged on what we've already done, not our potential, unlike the dudes, unfortunately. So the system works as intended. Um, and I think that as, as women of any profession or industry, we are born and bred in horror and we have lived it most of our lives. I don't know a single woman that hasn't had a, a terrible experience, but, um, I'm, I'm hoping to give a little hope to our, our sisters out there with this one. And um, it's, it's, it's difficult, you know, like I get a lot of meetings and um, people like to talk to me, but here we are because I, I, I still haven't been given a budget and I have to be open and honest about this because why not at this point, wh what do I have to lose? Right. And, you know, the, the strikes in Hollywood and Me Too coming out and like every everything is so much more open and transparent and I love it. And this is the opportunity to make something that 
perhaps I can get the next film budget and the one after that and opportunities and, and things like that. And uh, we'll see what happens from there. But, you know, it's, it's not been easy to answer your question. <laughs> No, I, but I think this is exactly what you said. This is the moment it feels like. It feels like at the moment in time, not only for females collectively, but just for the work that you've been doing and that people are starting to see that, you know, like that there is a viable um, entity in Izzy Lee. And I think that this is just going to be the beginning of that beginning. Thank so you. like from Thank here you. on, this is going to really open up a different door of possibilities for you and then you will be able to continue to mentor those that are up and coming right yeah i mean i would love to you know i i've had some some very cool mentors myself um you know these these are men in the industry that that want to see more stories that they want to see change too and they're very supportive like don't get me wrong i do not hate men i hate the system that we live in that yeah. we're forced to adhere to Mm -hmm. I want, I want opportunities from everybody. I want to see everybody's stories. I want there to actually be a democratic system. You know what I mean? I want there to be room for everyone at the table. So. Well, I just want to, I mean, I have seen, as we've discussed, Izzy, I have seen firsthand and been in meetings and been in conversations and pitches with projects of mine with, um, female directors attached. Um, and uh, it is amazing to me that under those circumstances, you have people who want to make movies with that director. Right. And if that director had been a man, the yeah. project would have been made mm -hmm. because even though that director hadn't had that budget yet, she had certainly proven her mettle, but they were like, well, you know, she hasn't done that yet. Right. But, but you guys give those deals to men every single day when they haven't done that yet either. But how do you do that if somebody will not give you the opportunity? And, and I think half the time, I think that it's um, bad faith that, that there are people, men and women, who are making those decisions who just don't think that uh, the female director that they're talking about is bankable or is going to deliver what they need or is going to be easy to work with or whatever. But half the time, and in some ways this is worse, I feel like there are people who tell themselves all the right things, but then the opportunity comes for them to do that right thing. Mm -hmm. And psychologically, somehow they're just like, well, you know, she hasn't done it yet. She has to like prove herself. Well, you know right. what, uh, you know, like, Izzy, you have proven yourself over and over and over again. And I'm so psyched that you're finally going to make a feature film. And, I'm, you know, we, we're not waiting anymore for one of these jackasses to, like, <laughs> you know, to, to be like, yeah, okay, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll make that happen. Because the proof is going to be, like, in, in what you do. So I'm, I'm psyched. Thank you very much. It means a lot to me coming from you. You're, you've been one of my biggest supporters that I've ever had and um me too and I'm, I'm gonna try not to cry um <laughs> the so another thing so i've been living on the razor's edge of anxiety for weeks do i launch this what do i give as reward tears what do i say how do i talk in this video how do i put the, jesus this video together it's this is harder than making the actual movie <laughs> um but the most wonderful thing is having hit you know, we're just about at 90% on day three. And I'm just, I'm blown away by the support. I am humbled and I am honored. And the, God, the, the kind of people that are sharing this, you know, established directors and writers and producers that, oh my God, I am just, I, I am over the moon with the support. So even if even if the tiniest chance that we actually don't make this uh, budget happen, which we will, we're reaching it. You know, we're there. Like that's it's it's a done deal. But like, if nothing else, I I now have like all of these people 
supporting me, whether they're sharing or pledging or just screaming it, ab about it. And, and just, wow, I'm, I can call myself a feature filmmaker. It's not exciting. I so, saw the perk of Meet Friend. So I just want to say, like, if for no other reason than to get a message from Meet Friend, let's all back this Kickstarter. <laughs> yeah, I love Meet Friend. <laughs> um, so just to kind of recap for the Nightworms audience and for anybody who's watching this video. Um, so saying yes to this project, what I'm hearing, saying yes to this project and backing this project with Izzy is you know, circumventing the patriarchy and, <laughs> and the establishment and just saying like, we want to see the movies made by the people we want to make the movie. Like, you know, it's putting control back in the hands of the people who are ultimately going to enjoy it and the people who are going to make it. And so that's the really cool thing about Kickstarter is it's um, a whole new way it's not new, new, but it's a whole new way for people to just kind of like, like you said, are just tired of banging on the wrong door and kind of going around the door and making things happen um, just based on your own merits that people have already confirmed. Like, like you said, people are tweeting it, established directors, established people in the industry are already saying yes and so for people to get behind it and just launch it into the stratosphere is, you know, now I'm going to cry. But <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible, right? It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's the just, most insane feeling. It's really cool. Yeah, it's Everybody cool. wants to see yeah. Izzy Lee unleashed. Yeah. Oh, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> it's going to be a ride. Unleashed, but with an AD to, <laughs> <laughs> to rain it Don't in. Eat them. Don't eat them. <laughs> I mean, Christopher Golden once told me too, um, the answer is already no if you don't ask. Exactly. You know, I there was a situation where I was just like, I don't know. I don't know if I should do this thing. And that's what he told me. Like, it's already no if you don't ask. So this is you, you know, telling the universe, this is what I want to do. So Ooh. ask and you yeah. shall receive. Yes. <laughs> oh my God, you guys. I am so fucking grateful. A a an entire party of filmmaker friends, directors, writers, producers, they had to get together in LA the other night and they video called me the first night of this campaign when we were at already 75%, it was insane. And they were so joyous and supportive and fucking wonderful. And I'm just, I'm kind of shell-shocked. And um, man, it's kind of like Pinocchio, I get to be a real boy now, you know what I mean? <laughs> Within the patriarchy, but uh, oh my god, I am so psyched to to bring some crazy, creepy things to you guys. Yeah, well, we're psyched too, and we're psyched to see your movie. Um, we're just gonna wish you the best of luck. We already know that, like you know, magical things are gonna happen. Um, this video will air on Monday, so my encouragement is for everybody over the weekend to just back the shit out of this thing and let's see this movie at the end of it. <laughs> yeah. Cannot wait. Nightworms oh. watch party. <laughs> yes. Yes. Nightworms watch party. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. so probably on Twitter or, or whatever it's Blue called Sky. now or Blue Sky or some social media yeah. and do a giant watch party. You know, I was thinking about different. adding watch parties as stretch goals. Oh. Fun. That's fun. I'm in. Fun. It'd be fun. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all the appropriate links um, in the notes for this video um, for you to back this project and get this movie made. Um, and yeah, then there will also be some more links in there that Izzy will provide me with so that you can watch other shorts. Um, I have worked with Izzy in the past on a project. It was kind of like a secret project that never really like saw the light of day. But during that project, I saw what she was capable of and I was amazed. I'll just say that. Like, thank you. She amazed me. And I've read a lot of her short stories. I know where her creative brain um, is coming from and it's coming from a place of great horror and darkness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so if you like that, which I know the Nightworms do, yeah, you're going to want to get on board. Enchanté. So any last words before we close this Just, video? you know, give early and often. 
Yeah, that's great. <laughs> uh, I just I want to thank everybody here watching. I just want to thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for considering. And please let me entertain you with a little bit <laughs> and a little hope. That's awesome. Thank you so much. All right. I'm going to end the broadcast, but you guys can stay put. Bye, guys. Bye.